You're listening to the Reversing Climate Change podcast by the team at Nori, the carbon removal marketplace. This is a show about the innovators and entrepreneurs developing solutions to climate change. Hello and welcome to the Reversing Climate Change podcast. I'm Ross Kenyon. I'm the creative editor at Nori's Carbon Removal Marketplace. Today I have with me Dahl Winters, CTO of Deep Science Limited, an open air collective member doing R&D on carbon removal. Dahl, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much, Ross. It's a pleasure having you or having myself here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, which which one of us is the first person pronoun? Which person is the third or second? Okay, God, I even gave a little thing at the beginning because we're doing video right now because uh, I'm we're actually building a hobbyist direct air capture machine. I even warned us ahead of time that any sorts of changes or edits or goofy things that you say that <laughs> is going to be harder to correct than usual. So, okay, we made a syntactical joke and now the show is ruined. So we're going to, we're going to, we're going to fight over it. again. My, my bad. <laughs> I'm sure there are many takes to video. So we really appreciate your, uh, uh, your patience here. <laughs> Oh no, it's, it's, it's my pleasure. I'm happy to do this. I'm so excited because I want people to be able to participate in carbon removal. And as far as I know, pretty much the only thing available to people is to garden in a regenerative fashion. Mm. I think if you want to use cover crops, if you want to have a really diverse polyculture garden, you can do that and mm. you can increase the natural fertility of your soil. And that's really fun. And I like doing that too. I think that's it until now. Is this until is, now? Is yes. Until now. Yes. <laughs> what What is this uh, thing that we're building, and, and how did this come about? So this thing that we're building, it's called cyan. It's uh, short for cyanobacteria, which was the inspiration for this entire unit. Cyanobacteria are these tiny single cell organisms that early on in the planet transform the early Earth's atmosphere by taking CO2 out of the air, which is what we're trying to do as well, and turning it into something useful, uh, which was oxygen. And this was a, a process that took several billion years, but we don't have several billion years. We actually have 10 years to get from where we are now down to net zero. And so if we are striving for the, for the 2030 section of uh, things, um, we're wanting, we have 10 years. So we're striving for 2050. We have a few more years out from then. But I, I'm, I like to go for the more aggressive schedule. And so what this process is, it's a way of getting started with our transformation of how we do things in order to reach net zero. Um, we have to start somewhere and it starts with changing hearts and minds around carbon removal. And the whole goal of Cyan is to introduce a process of removing carbon that anyone can do at home. It's a, a home project, a school project, people can engage in the mechanics of actually removing carbon and see what it takes to do the process. And through that process, they can get a sense for what it's like at larger scales and maybe be more supportive of the larger scale systems as well. So that's what we hope to be building today. Uh, Ross, I'm so glad that you're able to uh, uh, take this under your belt and uh, get something uh, developed today. Yeah, I'm very excited. I've been acquiring these materials. But with regard to cyan and cyanobacteria, uh, my understanding is that they originally oxygenated the atmosphere, but also yes. killed everything that was not used to an oxygen oxygenated atmosphere. Is that right? Yes, yes. Okay. So they, uh, they are uh, the ultimate transformers of an ecosystem, but they gave rise to complex life as we know it. Without cyanobacteria, we would not be here. And so even though they, uh, all other forms of life kind of vanished, uh, which kind of is a mass extinction in itself for the most part, it's the very first mass extinction that occurred potentially. Um, we're here and we are faced with a decision that they weren't able to make because they're too single celled to actually make decisions. We can decide how we're going to do our atmosphere. Are we going to continue pumping CO2 into it without, um, without abandon? Or are we going to work to pull that CO2 that we've pumped in there out? I think the latter, I hope. And we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna do that today. 
Yes, a small bit today, but this will get us started to bigger and better things. So, so how do you want to build your system today? Do you want to go for the um, the inners, uh, the inner portion of the system, which um, basically does all the functionality, and then do the box and fan later, or do you want to try to get through everything now? And uh, we can do either one, whichever you decide. I like the modular approach. I like that there's a, a basic system and an advanced add-on. I have the materials for both. Um, Excellent. How much time do you think it would take to do both? Uh, to do both, it will be about an hour, uh, especially if you're able to power through things with a drill, uh, it'll be an hour. So um, okay. the basic system we've done in 20 minutes. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's get through that. And uh, so I'm ready to begin when you are. Your All your parts are there? Yeah, I have a whole, okay. We've never done something quite like this. If you're listening to this, because I'm sure we'll release it as a normal podcast, there's a video version of this. But yeah, there's a table behind me, as you can see. There's materials over there. At the table I'm working on as well, there's stuff behind the computer. And I'll be working here. So here I have a hummus container yes, <laughs> which figures yes. prominently into this device. <laughs> so. Yes, first you have to eat the hummus okay. and then you have the container okay. left over. And this container is, is just the perfect shape and the perfect size to fit into a smaller outer container, which is uh, uh, actually the inner portion of the cyan unit. So the reason why we're, we have this hummus container is to provide spacing. So we're going to go ahead and get a few parts out um, to show to show our viewers. And for those who are listening, uh, we'll walk you through what's actually going on. So, uh, so we need the small uh, plastic container as well. Uh, yes, that one right there, perfect. So this is a small uh, Sterilite Tupperware uh, container that's uh, all, so, somewhat see-through. The hummus container will fit right within that unit. Yeah, right within the container, perfect. And notice that it provides, it's about half the height of the unit. So half the height of this container. So it provides some spacing between um, the bottom and we're gonna fill this up with water so that the water will actually reach to the height of the lower portion of the lid. And so, before we add water, we need to do a few things to that hummus container. We need to make a hole in the top of the lid. So, so I have a, um, a quarter inch drill bit in the drill. Is it eight thirty seconds? It's uh, mm -hmm. the same. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so in that, you've already made a hole in there, or are you prepared to make one now? I am prepared to make one now. Should I just okay. go right yeah, in so the middle of it? Yeah, right in the middle and then one out to the side as well. So. Excellent. Is that okay? Yep. Yep. Hole in the middle and one out to the side to allow some uh, flow of water. When you say out to the side. Out to the side, meaning along the rim. Oh, okay. Like anywhere along the rim? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it should be uh, near the top of the, uh, so on the, along the outer radius. Along the outer radius. Yeah. And so what Ross is doing now is preparing two holes one hole in the center of the hummus container lid and another hole on the outer portion of the hummus container lid. And that's to allow bubbles of air when they form to basically, um, to, to go out of the container as well as uh, provide water flow throughout. This whole container will be filled with water. So this is just perfect, excellent. So we're looking good. Yeah, that outer hole can be on the top, it can be on the side, but that um, basically that middle hole is always in the middle and uh, that just helps to, to push water and to add water through. Okay, so now we have that. Our next thing that we're going to add now is the air pump and the air stone uh, and the tubing assembly. 
So we should have an air pump that comes from uh, Tetra. I think that's the air pump. Yep, Tetra uh, air pump there. It's a Whisper 10. And we also have the Aquanet, which is a collection of uh, parts that are needed for, okay, standard three, yes, yeah, stones and valves, air stones and valves, perfectly. Okay, so let, let's go ahead and open that and we'll open the air pump as well. So inside of this bag, there's a bunch of stuff and basically everything you need is in there. Um, he's opening the bag now and we have a series of tubing, um, airline tubing, and then there's an air stone. There should be two air stones in there. And now the air pump is being arranged and we have the air pump being shown. It's a small unit uh, about hand sized. Yeah, looks good. And um, there should be a place to insert tubing onto that air pump. So we'll give you a chance to get everything uh, situated there. Yeah, for this tubing, I saw in the instructions, I should cut about a foot of it. Is that yeah, right? Yeah, a foot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. a foot of tubing. If it's a little long, that's okay. Mm -hmm. It'll, it will always help, but a minimum of one foot. And I, am I putting it onto this nodule here? Yeah. There's a nodule at the end of the air pump, and we're going to just sit that in there, You're which is the end of the tube. For my work at all. Oh, sorry to interrupt you. Oh, aerators, you, you've worked there? You've worked with aerators before? Oh, no, I said you're an excellent narrator. <laughs> oh, narrator. Oh, well, thank you. My ears are sometimes not as sensitive to uh, <laughs> hearing stuff, but I can narrate really well. I do appreciate things. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so, so, so maybe cutting. a little bit longer, but okay, perfect. So we are that that looks like a good length, and we have cut the air tubing, perfect. And now that air tubing will fit on the end of one air stone. So in your other package, you should have an air stone. Air stones are, uh, yep, those two small things that are purple. They are ceramic items that bubble the air through the ceramic and produce a whole bunch of micro uh, bubbles that, that really small bubbles that are created. So put this together here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we have the air tubing going onto the end of the air stone and capping the end of the air tubing. Excellent. That's perfect. Okay, it's all the way on there now. Yep. So how this is going to work is that that air stone will reside on the side of the hummus container. So go ahead and insert that along the side of the hummus container, which is between the, um, the, the small outer transparent container and the hummus container itself. Okay, so inside of this container, but not inside of the hummus container. Correct, yes. Okay. So basically one of the four corners will be good. And actually if you put it, yeah, like, like that, uh, perfect. That's exactly how it should go. So, so it should lay flat um, along the bottom side of the, uh, the outer container. And the air, the air pump is basically, uh, it's a 1.5 watt unit. For viewers who are doing this, uh, who are building one, you don't have to run it continuously, but it has to be run uh, enough to uh, to make the filter paper, which we're going to put onto here uh, in a bit. That has to get wet uh, over time, but not wet immediately. So this is, this is uh, that is for the outer unit, uh, yeah. for the big box and fan unit. Yes. So filter paper is a coffee filter. Um, oh, yes, I have that too. Okay. Excellent. So we all have coffee filters at home for those of us who drink coffee. So um, those, those coffee filters are about the same color as the, the material that we're going to add, which is the calcium hydroxide. So do you have the calcium hydroxide ready as well? I do. Um, we don't need it now, but if you just want to show, uh, show everyone what it looks like. Well, for those of us who can see it. It's not this hydrated lime, is it? It is, yes. Probably. Hydrated lime is calcium hydroxide. It's such an ominous sounding chemical <laughs> synthetic sound. <laughs> yes, 
Calcium hydroxide is actually the material that once it soaks up CO2, it makes calcium carbonate. And calcium carbonate is uh, the stuff that seashells are made of, eggshells are made of it, uh, agricultural lime is made of it. So if you're trying to uh, put this out in your garden after it's all carbonated, you can do so. Uh, that's what this stuff is made of. So is it what limestone is or is it related? Yes. Yes, oh, limestone no. is actually uh, calcium carbonate. It, it's, it's mostly, it's about 70% calcium carbonate and some other things as well. And it's so, kind of like it's, it's basic in terms of its alkalinity. It's yeah, like, mm -hmm. yeah. On, on the pH scale, there's, it goes from acids to bases. And this is definitely a basic material that we are, that we have here. I think insofar as it makes sense to explain some of the chemistry, it should be done. I, mm -hmm. I'm certainly not even an amateur. I think it's one of the few classes I did pretty poorly in, uh, to be quite frank. Uh, so, so if it makes sense to explain this to someone with absolutely no chemistry background, it might be good. Yeah. Yeah. So, so hydrated lime is essentially calcium hydroxide. That is the form of calcium that occurs uh, it can occur in nature, but we generally make it from uh, we, we make it from sources of calcium carbonate already. Mm -hmm. And so when we are using this in our cyan units, we're actually taking the, the carbon which was driven off, adding it back in and making a carbon neutral cycle. Now, there are ways of actually making calcium hydroxide that are carbon negative, um, ways that you can use alkaline materials such as fly ash or steel slag or other sources of alkalinity and process those sources to reclaim the calcium that's in them. And that can be done electrochemically. Uh, there's a company right now that is doing that and uh, they should be online uh, with providing us with some good resources later this year. I remember seeing in one of the grant giving cycles of I think the Department of Energy, the moisture swing of Klaus Lackner is I think one of the most famous, but also I've seen alkalinity swings that uh, yeah. like acquire and release CO2 from changes in the pH. Is that pretty popular yes. right now? Or people are thinking about this? Yeah, the, the, this a, a, any and all means of collecting CO2 from the air uh, using alkalinity swing, moisture swing, there's different types of methods. The reason why these are swing methods is you have to first collect the CO2 and then do something to it in order to release the CO2. So that's why there are different, the, you, you have a swing in the process basically to, uh, to carry yourself to uh, uh, a more CO2, uh, to, to release that CO2 from whatever you're using to capture it. <laughs> Amazing. Okay, well, I have this hydrated lime here ready to go. I think okay. this is the part where I need safety here, yeah? Not yet, because we haven't finished uh, assembling everything yet. So uh, there's also a lid that uh, goes onto the top of the hummus container. Uh -huh. And that lid should be the, uh, is either the HDX port lid or a, uh, um, or it might be, you can even use a yogurt container lid. A one quart yogurt container is the same. Yep, the lid for that. Oh, I don't think it came with a lid. Um, oh no. <laughs> is this a, a crucial item here? Uh, it, it's, it's crucial enough that, uh, if you don't have it, we can't run an experiment, but if you don't have, if do you have a yogurt container at home and do you recycle your yogurt containers? Yeah, I can, I can run and go get one right now. Okay. All right. <laughs> yeah. Quarter. All right. Yeah. The one quart yogurt container is actually uh perfect. That is the lid, the same exact lid size, because this is a one quart HDX, uh, port container as well. So. Look at that, look at that. Yeah. See, it, it works perfectly. This is all we needed it for. And for those of you who bought the HDX quart container, uh, it's good for mixing other materials. So it's definitely not a loss, but the lid is actually the most important portion of getting that container. Oh, wow, that's, <laughs> that's so funny. I don't know why they didn't <laughs> give it to me. I have everything here, but. Yeah, yeah. So the lid, it, it won't actually, we don't need it to fit on the container. Uh, we need that lid separate and that lid should be turned upside down and put onto the hummus container. Yeah, okay. just like that. So what that lid is for, it's for lifting up and out your coffee filter, which is going to house your calcium hydroxide. 
Okay. So we should get one coffee filter ready. Okay. And just to showcase how this is done, um, this is definitely one of the things that um, the coffee filter will rest on top of the lid. And over time, the air will bubble uh, through the water and wet the side of that uh, coffee filter. That along with the humidity that's in the, the when you collapse the lid will actually allow the, uh, the filter paper to uh, uh, become more wet. And that will percolate through and up through the calcium hydroxide that you're going to add. So what, next we're going to add the calcium hydroxide. So let's get that, that ready. And for those of you who are doing this at home, you should always wear a mask until you become familiar with how to scoop the material um, without pouring it. So I've been able to use without wearing a mask. Oh, wow, we have goggles and everything so we don't get anything into the eyes. We are all... Um, we're, we're decked out with the PPE here. Yeah, yeah. So I went overboard, but I don't want any of this inside me. <laughs> yes, yes. So, um, so yeah, it's always good. You know, this material, you don't want to get it in your eyes because it's basic, but, uh, but you, um, it's very, if you get it on your hands or so, just don't rub your eyes, always wash it off. And uh, um, magnesium hydroxide we're experimenting with right now, it doesn't have so much of the, uh, the safety concerns, but we can't get a good source of magnesium hydroxide that is relatively cheap yet. Uh, it's cheap, but it's not as cheap as going to your hardware store and getting hydrated lime, so. Fair enough. Look, I have a... Um, you have a spoon, a okay. Spoon. All we'll need is a spoon, a small spoon, about a teaspoon yeah. size or so. And what we wanna do with that is go ahead and open up the bag of hydrated lime. And to do this, um, yep, just cut the open, uh, cut it open along the side. And you'll want to cut enough of a space such that you can get the spoon into the bag, along with some of your hand as well. Actually, a little bit more room here, actually. Yeah. And if you're in a high humidity environment, such as if you're in Florida or some places along the East Coast, you will definitely want to have um, uh, consume your bag pretty quickly if you're going to run experiments. Um, meaning that if you have, uh, if you let it sit out, it will carbonize over time uh, under the high humidity. So if you are wanting to capture how much carbon you actually are taking out of the air, just be warned that over time, um, in the course of a few months or so, it might actually capture less carbon than you had. Um, it will become calcium carbonate on its own okay. in a high humidity environment. I can get the spoon into it now. Excellent, okay. So now we get the spoon in, let's go ahead and uh, get a little bit out and place it, we, we, should, we should weigh the filter paper first, but uh, we're just doing this for demonstration. And we know how much the filter paper weighs pretty much. It's about 0.86 grams. So I think you need a bigger hole than that. <laughs> okay. A... Yeah, just like that and go ahead and drop it in. Okay. Yeah, and make it nice and flat, uh, spread it across the surface. Surface area is really important for this. The more surface area you have, the, um, the more likely you are going to absorb more CO2 in the air. So making it into a single mound won't help very much. Uh, it's always good to have it nice and flat. So, okay, so your hydrated lime has, uh, let's go ahead and remove the bag of hydrated lime and see if we can tilt the camera down to see what you have. Uh, going on there. Yeah. Excellent. So this is now the assembled cyan unit that actually does all the work. Uh, the box and fan are only to dry and to get more airflow. Uh, if, if you're running it, it, it will consume about uh, I think it was at low speed, 0.75 watts of electricity, the, the fan will. 
uh, this is 1.5 watts. And we calculated that even with the amount of uh, electricity used, we still get enough carbon captured uh, through the process to make it carbon negative. If you don't count the, uh, the manufacturer of the, uh, the calcium hydroxide right now, which can come from different sources, um, low carbon sources, as well as high carbon sources. Yeah, I was going to so, ask you about that LCA point, but uh, yeah. maybe maybe that's something to dig into a bit later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's always important. You want you want to make sure that when you're doing carbon accounting, to uh, make sure that uh, you are actually removing CO two from the air and not putting up more CO two from the activities that it takes to uh, uh, to make this unit. Okay. So we actually have some calculations that are on our GitHub site on OpenAir uh, Dash Collective. That's the name of our repository. And then under Cyan, uh, there's a Cyan repository. Under there, uh, there's supporting system calculations that basically outline the energy use, the consumption, transportation costs, getting the material to and from the locations that you need, and all of that. Mm -hmm. That's all uh, in place. Nice. So. I, I, I love I love the uh, the mask and the goggles. Those are just perfect on you. <laughs> Am I too conservative? Am I? Like... You're not too conservative. You are you are going at it well for a first time chemistry project. So, <laughs> um, so I wanted to uh, before we we uh, get everything settled. Uh, there's the minor portion of adding the water. Okay. Uh, so there's some water that should be added to this container. Um, should I put it into the side, like where the ceramic yeah. thing is? Yeah. yeah, go ahead and remove the filter paper for now and uh, just set that off to the side. And then you'll want to take the water and remove the lid as well, uh, the lid of the, uh, uh, the, the, the yogurt lid, and pour the water into the hummus container as well as on the outside, being careful to uh, not get the water level above the bottom rim of the lid, the, the, the bottom rim of the lid, yes. Is the hummus container expected to fill up with water during yes. this? Yes. Entirely? Okay. Yeah, entirely. So yeah, go ahead and fill up the whole thing. The whole point of getting water in the hummus container is to uh, make sure it doesn't float. You want it to um, yeah, be yeah. nice and, and stable at the bottom. And when the outer level of water reaches the, uh, the bottom of the lid, uh, you're good. So is it flat? I need more water. I'm gonna, can I use this? Is that okay? Yeah. I'm oh yeah, yeah, definitely. And I'm using filtered water and not tap water to avoid any other chemicals. Is that okay? Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Yeah, you can use tap water if it's chlorinated. Um, that that um, We haven't tested chlorinated water because I have well water here. But, um, but if you use uh, filtered water, that's perfect. Okay, I'll be right back. Yeah, I have returned. All right. So do you, where do you filter your water at? Do you buy it or do you have just like Brita filter water through a carbon filter or so? It's just reverse osmosis through the sink. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. You have ultra clean water. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So go ahead and press your uh, hummus container down and make sure that it's um, before we get the water level too high in there. Perfect. Yeah. Let's fill it up and make sure we have plenty of water. I think it's it's nearly. Is it floating? Um, Go ahead and press the lid down uh, firmly and then any excess uh, that you might have that's uh, air that's trapped underneath the lid should work its way out over time. If there's yeah. enough, um, hopefully there's enough water in the middle that there's no air bubbles inside the lid. Um, I pour a little bit more. A little more. I see a couple of air bubbles. Okay, that's not a problem. As long as it's not floating, that's what we want to avoid. So. Okay, it's like a little bit above the edge of the lid, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if it's a little bit above. Uh, see if you can pour some out. Um, 
or take a uh, take your spoon that you have and uh, uh, see if you can dip some out. Uh, I think you have like a uh, not that spoon, but the uh, there there's uh, another one that you had. Yes, scoop. Maybe that would work. Oh, it won't fit. I'll just I'll take this guy out first. Okay, perfect. Yeah, so we're emptying out some water. And that water, hopefully two scoopfuls will be good. Yeah. Does it help? Good. Perfect. It's maybe, yeah. It's like right at the, touching the bottom of the lid of the hummus. Okay, container. that's right, okay. perfect. Perfect, yes, yes. Okay. All right, so now we can put the lid back on uh, the top of the hummus container and the filter paper back on the lid. And then you can close the lid of the outer, yeah, just like that, over the filter paper and uh, everything else. And it won't close entirely. It should close uh, enough that you can have the tube running out. And then that is your completed inner unit. You're actually ready at this stage to do an experiment. And in order to, uh, I, I would actually, let's see, that filter paper, uh, if you can bend the edges down a little bit so that um, it will, it, it will, um, yeah, kind of flatten it out a bit. Uh, yeah, just like that, perfect. Okay. And then that should, yeah, it, it will almost close, but not quite. All right, so now that is actually ready to turn on and start carbonizing. Um, you can plug in your air stone and then uh, your air pump on the other end. And then over time, this will start uh, getting humidity inside the container while allowing sufficient airflow. And if you were to weigh this uh, beforehand, we didn't weigh the initial. When you do an experiment, you do want to weigh the initial amount and then weigh it finally. But for now, we're just doing a demonstration, so we won't be so careful about weighing things. Um, but that will be the process by which you can tell if the carbon dioxide that you've captured has actually uh, that, that you've captured uh, X amount of carbon over time. Okay, it's going, can you see it? It's going, look at that. Yeah, the air, the air bubbles are coming out of the air stone and we are getting humidity in there. Yes, so over time, the paper will eventually go down and collapse a little bit. Uh, you'll see it start to, um, Ultimately, if, if, you, if, you, if you're not seeing crackling or uh, basically uh, cracks form in the surface of your calcium hydroxide in the course of two hours or so, you might want to add a little more water or bend down the filter paper even more uh, because there's not enough humidity reaching it. But this is the basic process. This is as simple as you can get. Uh, how, how, how much was this uh, assembly? Uh, everything in here should be about $20, a little bit more, except for uh, uh, the hydrated lime, which is adds a, a little more to that. So about $40, I think. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, so excellent, excellent. So at this stage, this is module one, and we have just completed module one, just like that. <laughs> We did it. So this Congratulations. Is yes, yes. So the next step uh, is module two. So we can go ahead and sit this off to the side somewhere. Uh, let this continue running. You can unplug it if you need to, to get it to a final resting place for the duration of, uh, of today's podcast. Excellent. And now we are ready for the box and the fan. Yes. So this is the portion that takes the longest amount of time in, in terms of making the hole, uh, cutting the hole for the fan. But once you have this in place, you can do a number of things with your unit. Uh, so we're going to look at the, uh, this is the unit that everything plugs into that we're opening up right now. Perfect. 
So this is a USB uh, as well as AC adapter. And then we also have the fan in place as well. This is what you're opening up next. So the process for this fan is we're going to, this fan basically has a front and a back. The front side will, will, will need to face uh, out of the fan or out of the box so that you're actually getting uh, airflow out of the container. So what we're gonna do first is before anything else, um, we are going to use the, uh, the, the fan as a template to draw and you should have like a marker or a uh, some some way of actually uh, drawing a hole or drawing a circle. Perfect, Sharpies, yes. On the side of your, on the side of your container. So which side is the front? Um, where does it open up at? Just, right there, okay. So your left is going to be, not the video's left, but your left is going to be where you're actually, yep, yeah, that side, that's where you're going to mount your fan. So before we mount the fan, we're going to disassemble the, um, the back of the fan a bit. And then actually it's the front, the front of the fan. Yes, the front. Um, so yeah, that part right there. That part has four, um, the front of the fan has four corners with um, with these little foamy uh, nubs on them. And we're going to, uh, there needs to be a screwdriver, a Phillips head screwdriver that you'll need to assemble, disassemble the front side. I love that tool, by the way. Oh my goodness, that is a, a oh, yeah. very, the very one nice one. Yeah, it's, it's coming handy more than once. <laughs> oh my goodness, that is perfect. So what you're doing is you're disassembling the front of the fan to removing the, uh, the, four, the uh, four knobs that are actually acting as vibration dampers. And then that frees the front side grill for further use. So what we're gonna do with that is align that on the side of your um, box. So on the side that we were going to, not on the side, but on, yes, the actual side, the left side of the, or actually the, this will be the right side for those who are um, facing the box. Yes, just like that. Okay. So we want to put that uh, not in the center, but a little bit towards the top. Uh, not exactly at the top because the fan will need to sit, but yeah, right about an inch below the top of, uh, of that one rim, just like that. And now you can draw with your Sharpie the holes that you'll need to create as well as the, uh, the center hole, which is drawn if, if you are, go ahead and draw your four holes. and that'll give you a point of alignment. And then with it still in the same place, draw your round hole, the big round, the big round hole that you're going to cut, which will follow the outside of the, uh, the circle. Actually like just trace the outer. Yeah, trace place. the outside. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there we go. Are you able to see it okay? Yeah, we can see this perfect. Yeah, right back there. And we have traced. So now, can you remove that and show us what you've done? Perfect. So this is what we should all have when we're building this unit. Uh, basically, a, a trace of where the holes are that we need to make. So the drill will slice through like butter. Uh, if you have a really sharp drill bit, uh, it'll go through those four outer holes really quickly. Uh, we're going to do, and you can angle the camera up a bit uh, for this as well. Um, the, uh, the, the quarter, the quarter inch drill bit, the same one? Yep, yeah, same one. And uh, this will, you'll want to start with the inner hole first. 
and this this will be good if you have like a, a speeding up of your video uh, for later, showing the process because this will take a, a bit of time. Um, basically, what you want to do is make drill holes. Um, don't do the four on the outside first, but concentrate your uh, your efforts on drilling several holes in succession around the uh, the the circle. Should I err on the inner side of the line? Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Inner side line will be good. Okay. Yeah. Let me see. And you have to press down a bit. Yeah. Did it go in? It uh, it locked up. Oh no. Fuck you. <laughs> This is always the hard part. <laughs> walking. Hmm. Oh no. Okay, maybe you should try a smaller drill bit uh, just to get things started. Yeah, I can do that. Yeah, we we had a, a um, an open air member and her mom do this the other day. Uh, it was like two weeks ago, and she had an ultra sharp drill bit. Um, probably they I think they just bought it from the store. And um, it just powered through like butter. It just cut through the plastic amazingly. Um, but the other way of doing this, if you don't have a drill, is to use a box cutter. That takes a lot longer amount of time. Um, so it's a lot of work, but once you get it done, uh, you don't have to do it again, so. Okay, I have a... I'm using a smaller one that I think will cut through much faster. Excellent. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, just um, punch through. Oh, yes. Perfect. Perfect. Oh, look, we have somebody there who's there to meet you. Hello. <laughs> This is Dahlia. This is a, a foster dog. <laughs> We've been. Hi. He's wondering what you're doing. Oh, that's so sweet. Hey, what is all this sound <laughs> in here? Sniff this drill. Yeah. <laughs> Half inspection. He's, like... <laughs> <laughs> He's wondering what you're doing. I'm surprised he doesn't. He He's not scared of the sound. No, I think she's just curious. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. It's like, what are you doing with this box? This box was a perfectly good box. It could house my dog food. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I guess I'll keep trying here. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, just air on the side of the inner portion of the circle and uh, just keep drilling around. And the idea is that you'll, you'll get enough of these holes where you can use a box cutter to basically connect the dots between each of these holes and it'll go by a lot faster. Oops. <laughs> That's not good. We have a drill bit that actually came off of the drill, but that does easy to remedy. Okay. Yeah, your, your dog is so sweet. She's so calm in, in this whole process. <laughs> yeah, she's a sweetie. <laughs> What's her name? Uh, Dahlia. Dahlia. Oh my goodness. I, I'm sure she thinks that when you're saying my name, that uh, you're saying her name. <laughs> yeah. That's no, my name's Doll. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. She's good. Just, just hanging. Oh, uh, yes. Yes. So how's it going? Are you finding the, uh, it looks like you're doing a great job with, uh, with developing the holes there. You're getting it all on one side and it's going quite well. Um, yeah, I think it's gone fairly quickly here. Yeah. You have one hand on the box, which is good. Uh, helps to uh, stabilize things quite a bit. And uh, are you doing consecutive holes? It looks like you're doing consecutive holes. Yeah, I can show you. Oh my goodness, look at that. Oh, yeah. that's great, that's great. Yeah, we, we, we've tried doing um, holes in different spaces before instead of doing them consecutively, but you're doing such a great job of this that um, uh, this might be the next 
best uh, way of actually making this this uh, this hole happen. So the goal of this hole is to mount a fan, and um, that provides enough airflow through the unit. Now, in the past, we've had cyan builders uh, do the one hole first, and then leave the uh, the lid open to let enough airflow get through. But really, there are supposed to be two of these holes, uh, and the the second one doesn't need to be. Uh, um, uh, it, 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 it's not as visible if you happen to make a mistake in the plastic or so. Uh, second one is directly opposite this first one. Mm. I have a conceptual question, Doll. Sure. Which is when we're talking about the moisture swing and the alkalinity swing, mm -hmm. um, my understanding is that it's a swing because it's moving between two states, one of capturing and then one of releasing. Mm -hmm. And um, would you, the device that we're building here with Cyan is not a swing because it seems like it's only one way, right? It only captures. Yeah. It's, not, it's not like that's, a, that's absolutely correct. If yeah. it, it would be a swing, if you were to do like a, a process where you took the, the CO2 and actually released it from the, from being a calcium carbonate, but to do that requires either acid or really high temperatures. And so since those are the, those are two things that we'll never encounter, it is a very permanent way of locking away the carbon. Um, so we are going to basically take this CO2 and store it as carbonate and it will not come back out again for the foreseeable future. <laughs> Why do you, why do you, I mean, is it more common to think in terms of swings at the commercial or even like bench testing scale or how are yeah, people? Yeah, yeah. I, I think the, the swings are, are really important because uh, at the commercial scale, you're able to run more cycles over a period of time. And you're, you're taking the CO2 out of each cycle and storing it as compressed gas. Mm -hmm. So in a home process, you're not actually doing a lot of compressed uh, um, gas or if, if, if any, uh, you're, you're wanting to lower your amount of energy consumption and uh, not put so much of it into compression. So in this process, we are interested in just locking away the CO2 if at all possible. Whereas in commercial plants, you can do something with the CO2. You can actually compress it and then that frees up your sorbent for another cycle. Probably also helps with the LCA if you're not constantly having inputs. There's like a re recycling kind of aspect mm -hmm. of the swings. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. With, with uh, the 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 basically, if you're making um, the material to use one time, uh, like metal organic frameworks or uh, solvents or um, uh, liquids or not liquid solvents but sorbents. Those are things that you make one time and then you can reuse 20 or 30 times uh, easily um, without suffering any loss of, uh, of, of capacity. So at a commercial scale, you definitely want that. At a more home scale for demonstrations, uh, it's if you have material and you're locking away CO2 in the form of carbonate, it's totally okay to, uh, to be able to do that because that way you get to measure how much carbon dioxide you've actually taken up over time. Um, with these commercial processes, with each swing, it's really hard to actually measure anything uh, in that. In, in, uh, you, you have to measure the CO2 per, in parts per million that is in the air. And look at this, I think we are done. I, I think so. You can finish your thought that, I didn't mean to interrupt you. But. Oh, no worries. I just saw that and I thought that was so cool. So yeah, basically the parts per million in the atmosphere, um, you, you, you want to uh, measure that and, uh, um, but it's hard to do with these industrial processes. Uh, you basically need like a flow meter and some other things uh, to, to, get, to get underway, so. But back to this, I think we have the hole perfectly formed and that was by far the fastest hole cutting. Uh, right? Yes, <laughs> there we go, that is why, yes, yes. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that, that helps to build up a little bit of muscle too, you know, just putting, uh, putting the force down on that. It. Yeah, <laughs> I think it's good. Now I'm trying to figure out how to do this part. This part is yeah. kind of dangerous. 
yeah this part just it just made the blade go out just a little bit uh so you don't need the blade like fully extended um maybe a little more than that yeah or yeah about halfway and then hold one hand on just like you're doing uh hold one hand on the box and then the second hand will point downward with the box cutter onto the uh uh, where where you have your holes at, and basically you want to slide the knife across the holes, and score press down while you're doing it, and uh, or I can just kind of press into it. Yep, yeah, press into it and uh, go right back out, so that way you're you're never uh, uh, in in fear of cutting anything else than the box. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think. I think this will be pretty easy to just kind of go across like this. I would say Look at don't, that. don't drag it if you, the dragging it part seems dangerous. Yeah, yeah, the dragging part is really difficult and uh, dangerous. So um, just um, punch into it and there we go. It looks like it's coming along really well. How am I doing though? Am I an excellent? You're runner? doing perfectly. This is, I think we have a new record for the amount of time that it takes to cut this hole. <laughs> yeah, the time's really well too. So we're we're doing great on time. Great. Yeah, Look at that hole. Good. It is coming out. Oh my goodness. Oh, that is great. We've got a, a good bit. We're about halfway done here with us uh, with cutting the hole. Has there been a lot of interest in cyan? There's also another unit you're working on called uh violet. Is that right? Yes, yes. Yeah, Cyan, there's been a very good amount of interest. Uh, we, we have the University of Michigan, which is uh, going to start a competition, um, has plans for a competition. And uh, we also, based on Cyan. What? Uh, oh, to make, that? to make Cyan or to improve it or? To improve it, yes. Wow, that's cool. Yes. And we also have uh, interest from, I just gave a talk to the Open Hardware Summit, uh, which is the Open Hardware Associations. Uh, open source hardware associations uh, meeting annual meeting this year and there was a good bit of interest for, about uh, building science and we also have a curriculum that we're planning um, to to put together on this as well for other colleges and universities and uh, high school students to uh, all be able to participate so I love stuff like this so much I think it's really valuable for making people think and, and encouraging yeah. their imaginations and I also just like working with my hands and having an excuse to do so I don't think a lot of yes. people have as much of that as maybe they would like I know and then look at that look at what you've done in such a short amount of time this is so cool uh so that hole is cut it's done so the violet unit is going to be much bigger than this unit uh so without that's currently underway and that's something that we're also building open source open hardware as well so <laughs> is it similarly using uh hydrated lime or is it some other chemical it, it's some it, it's using a uh solid sorbent so it, it's a material that actually uh uh absorbs uh, absorbs co2 and then releases it upon contact with water so, so. It, it's a moisture swing moisture that, swing yes that, that is what it is okay yeah 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 um Okay. So, so now that you have this fan, uh, fan hole built, do you want to go ahead and put the fan in? Yes. Excellent. So we also need to cut uh, four holes for the uh, the outside. I don't think we've done the, those yet. Have you done those? I have not, but I, I can. And we, this okay. is the part that, that's the, that's going to go on the inside. Okay. That's the back side, and that's going to yep. Yeah. So that. That's the back side of the fan, and that's going to mount on the inside of the uh, the plastic container. Understood. Okay, let me cut these four yep. more. Four more. We're almost done. Once we mount this fan, we'll we'll definitely consider us done for uh, for this build. And uh, the goal is to put the what you've done on the inside, uh, the the inner unit, on the inside of this unit. If you're going to uh, uh, dry out the, uh, it's basically to help get more drying, more drying of the. Uh, oh, that's perfect. So 
look at that hole. Oh, that, that is like the best roundest hole that I have seen. Uh, <laughs> it's just a jagged though. But it's yeah, good. you need a file to, uh, but but you, you you won't be able to feel it when you, when the fans mount it, so. Okay, so now yeah. I'm gonna try and mount this from the inside. Yeah, so the, uh, the fan is going to go on the inside, excellent. And the wire is going to go towards the back of the box. And you'll want to mount it such that, yep, so there's the wire. It's going to go uh, in the other direction. So like that. Mm -hmm. And then the wire should go towards the back of the box. So you might need to, re to rotate that by 90 degrees. Oh, the fan. The fan, yes. You need to go to the back of the box. Uh, no, actually, um, so open the lid and go ahead and, and mount the fan in there, just like you had it, uh, but this will, just like that, yes. And if the wire is facing the back of the box, that's, that's good. I, I can can't look. quite tell where it is. Oh, so here it's coming off the front. Okay, yes, so rotate the fan 90 degrees such that the wire is facing the back. Like that, perfect, perfect, yep, just the like back, that. The back being where the hinge is for the top? Yes, okay. correct. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have this now. All right, so now you can put the uh, safety grill on the front and then line it up with the holes and then mount the fan. And you might need to let the fan go for now and then just concentrate on the safety grill and getting the, uh, the, the um, holes. Uh, yeah, you'll need to remove, oh, sorry, you need to remove the, uh, the, uh, the nubs from the, uh, the screws. So the screws are actually, um, this is the four screws that you have that are sitting on the table. Uh, those four screws will have to be removed. So, okay, I actually I cut these four holes in the plastic using the small bit. So uh -huh. I, need, I need to bring them up to the to the quarter. Oh, okay. All right. All right. I'll just quickly amend that. Okay. How many of these have been built so far? Uh, we've had about. Um, let's see. Uh, there's. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I think ten have been built so far. So we we've had quite a few from the University of Michigan. Uh, we had uh, quite a few from Open Air members. So I think there are about, um, yeah, about ten. This is kind of tough. Here. Kind of tough for those holds. I keep locking up. I need a. I need maybe. Oh no. I'll try something and then keep working my way. Up. Maybe that's. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. Yeah. See if the screws. The uh, the screws may go in without them being at a uh, eight three seconds. Or one quarter, I should say. <laughs> okay. So there we go. So, it looks like. Um, we now have the holes the proper size. We'll see. Right. It might still be too small, but I'll okay. So so those four uh, the four vibration dampers um, have screws in them. We'll need to remove those from the foam. Oh, okay. And to do that, you can easily pop them out. Uh, well, relatively easily if you set them down on a table, and then. Um, press downward on the screw, and that will separate it from, uh, from those um, relatively easily, I guess. <laughs> if not, then maybe um, you can try unscrewing them as well. But I've, uh, I've had some success with forcing the screw down um, onto the, uh, the table but you have such a nice table there, we probably don't want to do that. Yeah, I prefer not to, but I think I already have one out. Oh, excellent, excellent. Yeah. Um, so I'm taking these out of these dampers. And then, uh huh. And then um, I see someone there. Oh, yeah, can you see? 
<laughs> I saw her there for a moment there. Just inspecting the process. She's the foreman. Yes, yes. Yeah. <clears throat> Look at her. Oh. Yeah, she's going to be there for the first run of Cyan. <laughs> New experience for her. <laughs> this occasion, yeah. How's my audio been coming through during this? I keep neglecting the microphone and forgetting. Oh, it's been coming through well. I, I can still hear you perfectly. So uh, microphone just makes it a little more clear, but uh, everything you've said so far has been coming through great. So I wonder how many people will listen to this person is watch it. If you're listening right now, well, I wonder what this is like. You just Is it an ASMR <laughs> thing and people just talking about <laughs> building a machine that you can't see? <laughs> <laughs> is this even listenable? I don't know. We're going to find out, doll. It's a good experiment on multiple. It is, yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah, all of this, this entire process has been an experiment for us. Um, just getting these carbon removal systems out there, trying to work through how these are actually going to be uh, made, um, developing these, getting them to run, uh, getting them to run better. Uh, all of this has been a, a big experiment. And so where this will take us in the future, who knows, but with the help of people like yourselves watching uh, who are interested in building one of these, we'll get there a lot sooner. And so carbon removal really demands that we do something to remove the carbon from our atmosphere. And this is something that it's on a small scale, but if you have millions of these units out there, each doing a, hopefully a kilogram a day at, at, at some point when we get uh, enough efficiency, then that will have quite an impact on things, especially if you're using this to um, remove uh, your, to try to remove some of your personal carbon amounts as well. Now you have a background as well in, I think you said remote imaging and sensing and agriculture. Yes. So you're kind of a, a full stack carbon remover. <laughs> yeah, I, my, my background, yeah, I, I guess I, I've been, I'm full stack in engineering. Uh, I, I, I've actually, I'm, I'm, I've done um, science, biology, uh, computer science, and geographic information systems. So um, my background is actually doing uh, software around uh, making things happen geospatially. But uh, like satellite images, looking at land cover classifications with, uh, with, with, with uh, satellite and aerial imagery. But since I have started with carbon removal, I've just been doing this DIY work, uh, trying to see what I can do to remove my personal carbon contribution. So far, it's, it's definitely a journey. Uh, I'm doing small amounts. I'm able to take my light bulb that I actually run um, to power this room. My one light bulb, which is an LED light bulb, I can offset its emissions for three hours during one run of my cyan unit. So it, it does something. Uh, and I, my house is on 100% solar, so it's going to be really hard to get down to net zero if I don't do something to actually uh, remove my other carbon emissions. I don't drive but once a week, so, uh, so I'm actually at the kind of like the two ton, two metric ton range of, of emissions so far. Wow. Average emissions for Americans is uh, 16 metric tons. So I'm actually on low end due to my lifestyle changes. And then I need to do something to remove my further emissions. So wow. this is part of that process. Yeah, that's great. And it sounds like, I don't know, do you ever feel like you're giving up a lot or is it pretty fun? For you? No, no. I, I, I think I've actually gained uh, from what I've done. I, I work from home. I do all my business, my operations and everything from home. Uh, my, my Zoom calls and everything is how we actually make an income here. Uh, I, I, uh, I have not felt that bad about not driving more than once or twice a week at the most. Uh, I go about 50 miles uh, in, uh, for, for across those uh, entire uh, weeks, uh, 50 miles for, per week, um, almost. And I just go to the grocery store, buy a few things, order everything else online. 
uh, that we, we need, which isn't very much, but, uh, but it's amazing what you can do with, without having to fly everywhere. Uh, you can do everything from Zoom. It's, it's, it's so cool. Uh, that, that's one of the things we learned about working in this uh, remote age. Yeah, it's been not as bad as expected. In some ways, I, I miss it, but I think I think yeah, yeah, I, 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 world maybe. Yeah, it's always a change. We're we're we're, we're so spoiled with having cars that can travel like three hundred twenty miles on a, uh, a tank of gas. But look at that; that is beautiful. Is this right where you have the the grate and then these? Screws? Yeah, that's perfect. Mm -hmm. okay. And um, so go ahead and put the screws in, and then you'll be able to um, match those screws up with the fan on the other end. So yeah, I, I have been uh, doing this since November of 2020, making these units. So uh, it, it's been a process to, to get things developed and um, made more efficient, but it's definitely been well worth it. Look at that, perfect. Did we just meet on Clubhouse? Is that or did, did, was there? Yeah. <laughs> I think we you, you came to the Open Air Collective and uh, and then we met there and then we also met on Clubhouse. So yeah, that's been that's been really a, a fun thing. What what else yeah. is going on at Open Air Collective too? I know there's policy work happening. Yep, yep. There's uh, we do a lot around low and body carbon concrete. It's called LEC. If you look at our uh, website, there's something called LEC La, which is the Low and Body Carbon Concrete Leadership Act, and this basically is a uh, um, it's a bill that many people are working on uh, across the eastern coast as well as uh, some other places that we're starting to get uh, LECLA bills passed or worked on. Um, what these bills allow for is the consideration of, of carbon uh, footprint in your selection of your concrete that states procure. So when states, they actually are like the number one uh, concrete consumer for a number of these plants that are within each state. And the goal here is to have them consider the amount of carbon that goes into their concrete procurement. And so if you can use negative emissions uh, techniques to actually uh, uh, sequester some carbon in your concrete, um, like Carbon Cure is doing, that would be really awesome. Um, there's also ways of um, sourcing your concrete from lower carbon sources. And so we've, we've been really active in, in doing all of that, uh, helping to support the, uh, the, the people who are doing the legislation. Perfect. One quick question, Bell, is that the wire coming off of it is facing the back, but it's in the top back rather than the bottom back. Is that okay? Yes, that's perfect. That, that, that is excellent. It should be on the top back. Oh, okay. So yeah, it's it should be all, is that looking good? Yep, looking great. So that wire should actually come out the top and yep, just in the back like that. And then there will actually, so we've done one hole the other hole is um, for you to do at, at, at your leisure, but you don't actually need that hole if you are uh, um, if you keep the lid open a little bit just to uh, to let the airflow go through to dry the to, to dry the uh, the calcium hydroxide. So the way this works is you have your small unit it operating right now. It will fit within the larger unit and. If you finish your run, you can take the filter paper and sit it on top of the small container. And then that will allow you to use this fan and box to dry out, to get more airflow during the dry process. During the dry process, you're still, you're still absorbing CO2. Is, is the desire for more airflow to increase its productivity due to mm -hmm. the same principles that cause you to want increased surface area? Is that yes, yes, precisely. Mm -hmm. well, yeah, you want more airflow to get more CO2 and you also want more uh, surface area to get more CO2 as well. So because we're capturing CO2 from the ambient air, indoors you're at um, probably around 900 ppm or so on average. 
uh, 600 to 900, amazingly, due to just being uh, indoors. Just from exhalation. From breathing, yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, so the, the, uh, the ambient air, if you were to go outside, you probably would experience like a, a reduction in, uh, in capacity, a little, or a reduction in, in the amount of capture. Um, but not by much because 400 to 600 to 900 ppm, that's just like a, um, a factor of two or less. So look at that. We have our box made. Ah, oh, yes. And am everything I'm nicely clean. What's that? I said, am I an engineer yet or what? Is there you are. You yet? are, Ross. You are doing awesome. Look at this. <laughs> I love these open open uh, hardware things where we can just build and basically every time we make one of these, there's an opportunity to make the unit even better. So now that we have that there, our fan is mounted. We are able now to insert what we have on the, uh, the back table inside of this unit. And just to show how everything will work, uh, this is currently operating. Um, if it's okay to unplug it to transport it back over here, uh, we yeah. can go ahead and do that. Yeah, I was thinking I was going to do that. Yeah. And, um, and basically the air pump is going to go on the side near the fan. So inside. Near inside, uh-huh. On the side near the fan and... Uh, the wire comes out the back, yeah. Does it come out the, the back like here? Yeah, same place. Mm -hmm. Both of them come out there. And this is more for portability than anything else, to have uh, both units coinc coinciding with each other uh, on the inside. So, yeah, go ahead and lower that as as you can. Perfect. And then when everything's done, uh, you'll be able to open the lid and then let the uh, filter paper dry on top. And that's when the fan will actually be useful. So oh, I have, oh, you can't really see very well. Um, yeah, we, we can see if you turn it around. Okay, perfect. Oh, these cables. So the lid's open now, it just popped up. Okay, and it's down. You want it like this ultimately. Yeah, like that. But uh, we want the lid closed because the, uh, or if you left it open, it's probably, it, 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 it would uh, decrease the humidity and therefore it wouldn't work as efficiently. So you want it closed. And then leave the lid open as well because we don't have the hole in the back. I so in the back. yeah. There, there is a hole that, uh, on my unit, I have a hole in the front and the back, uh, or the, the side, the two sides. Mm -hmm. But for now, we're just going to use the box and the fan for drying. And so right now it's humidifying, so we're not going to use uh, uh, that for this purpose right now. But if you can turn it uh, so that we can see the, uh, the camera, uh, Perfect. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So this is a sign that we would have the second uh, fan hole through. Uh, that's what those safety grills are for that we have uh, that, that you said was the filter paper. Uh, those are what go on the backside. And uh, uh, that's not entirely necessary for now. But I would declare that we are complete. <laughs> After all that work, I know. <laughs> it is great, is it not? Do you feel accomplished, Ross? Yeah, I do. I sort of want to figure out how to make it so I can close this up and have it be like uh, a single company. unit, yes. So to do that, uh, go ahead and close it up. And um, you, you, can, you can route the wires uh, around the back side. Yeah, just like that, that'll work as well. But, um, it'll close, close is fine. Close is fine, excellent. And gentle. then, and then the uh, the fan. In order to uh, because right now the the fan will uh, not be used for drying because uh, will, will be used for drying, but it won't be used now because right now you're uh, um, right now you're trapping the air inside the air pump. Um, 
there's not a lot of airflow going on right now. So, uh, so the air pump is actually using, um, that's why the second hole in the back is necessary to get some airflow. But right now you're taking what's in the box, the CO2 that's in there and actually removing it. So if you were to mount a CO2 meter right now in the inside of your box, you would actually be able to measure hopefully a reduction of CO2. That's the idea. Okay. Well, if I wanted to start going, are you saying that I would turn on the the air stone or the water stone or whatever? It was yeah, called? yeah, yeah. Turn on the air pump. Uh, that would get it going. And then the um, I would also just to make sure there is a good amount of airflow. Um, yeah, we can move it back there and turn on the fan as well and see what happens with the fan. Uh, I, I imagine there won't be a lot of, uh, uh, there will be a good pressure reduction with the fan, but that will get, uh, since your wires are coming through, you'll get enough air, um, hopefully. But I should be using, oh, I need the USB. Yep, mm -hmm. yep, you'll need to plug in your um, uh, fan into one of the USB ports and then plug in your, uh, um, your air pump to one of the, um ac outlets okay i'm in i'm in that now I'm okay you're in that now great that is so i love your dog oh yes <laughs> she comes to inspect uh what you're doing <laughs> there goes the fan there goes the fan and here comes the water yeah excellent okay now they're both on they're both on. How's the fan doing? Is it quiet? Is it on? A, it should be on uh, the lowest level for um, uh, there's three settings and if it's on low, it's consuming the least amount of energy while still allowing airflow through the process. It's on low now. Excellent. Excellent. Well, Ross, you are a proud owner of a cyan. <laughs> <laughs> I did it. <laughs> You yeah. did it. Yes. Yes. Awesome. What do I do moving forward? I mean, I guess I could improve it more with the. Yeah. Yeah. You, you can also uh, uh, run experiments and help share the data with us to, uh, to try to see if you can develop some method of improvement. Um, so basically, do you have your scale with you? A uh, yeah. scale for weighing? Uh huh. Okay. We should walk through the process of how we actually weigh the material and put it in and then weigh the material after. So we, we didn't do that yet. And uh, yeah, go ahead and unbox your scale. And then this will allow you to actually take measurements and report them on the, uh, on a spreadsheet or on the cyan data share site, which is uh, linked to from our GitHub page on the open air dash collective. Uh, repository. That's one thing I like too is I've seen people call this open science or citizen science. Yes, yes. Like that related. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. So that scale, go ahead and turn on. I think the batteries are already in there. So what you would do is weigh your filter paper um, first, then you can weigh your material on the filter paper get a sense for how much you're adding it, it 10 grams is about uh, a, a good amount to add to your uh, your filter paper and then after that you can then report what your weight increase was so there will always be a weight increase because mass is not going anywhere else other than being added in the form of co2 i just zeroed the scale the filter filter Paper is point. Oh, I'm breathing on it. It's changing. <laughs> point point forty two grams. It's resting on the table also, so oh, no. it's probably not. Uh, okay, there we go. Oh wow, it's okay. Point nine one. Point nine one. Okay, so that was uh, that's a heavier filter paper than uh, I usually come by. It's it, it's uh, we usually get point eight six or so, but you might have a little bit of humidity um, in your environment. You're in Seattle, so it probably was absorbed some humidity. So that's perfectly okay. What we are interested in is the change in mass be before and after. So when next time when you run your experiment. 
definitely add your calcium hydroxide to the filter paper after you weigh the filter paper. This time, we're going to assume that you have 0.91 grams um, in there already. And so when you are done drying your uh, material, you will then take your um, material out, put it on the scale and subtract the 0.91 grams to get your amount that you've actually uh, taken up. M okay. Multiply by a factor of 1.7. Am I doing that right now or is that just in the future? In the future. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So that's just the rest of the process, how you can do uh, experiments, but you're all done now. You are completely done and we have built the unit. It's actually sitting back there running right now. And um, when we get done, um, just give me a call, give me a ring and uh, um, actually check in in a few hours to see how this is going, um, if you have some time. Okay, yeah, how do I know when it's, when it's done or what should I expect out of this device? Yeah, you should expect to see uh, when it's done, there will be um, thorough wetness of the paper, the filter paper, and your calcium hydroxide will not be soaking, but it will be, um, it will be, it'll have like these really fine crackles uh, or uh, um, it, it'll look crackly. It, it will look, uh, there will be indentations like grooves within the calcium hydroxide. What should I do with the finished product once it has stored carbon? Once it has stored carbon and it doesn't take up any more, you can make it into these cool things. Uh, if you were to get some extra Portland cement and biochar, you can make blocks out of these. Uh, they're nice and solid. Um, you can basically save them up for uh, shipment back to me, or you can also uh, use them out in your garden if you ration like your, the amounts that you use as well, because tomatoes like calcium carbonate. Uh, that's one thing I've heard. So if you happen to grow some, some, some uh, tomatoes, you might be able to do that. Or you can eventually make a retaining wall out of it. Yes, yes. Building materials are excellent for an excellent application for this. <laughs> Very cool. Well, if someone wants to do this themselves, uh, they want to get involved in Open Air Collective, how should they go about doing so? Yeah, definitely reach out to us via openaircollective.cc. That's our website. There is a join us button. And there, the join us button is at, at the very bottom of the page when you, when you go to that page. You will then be able to get an invite to our Discord server where we have community support for cyan units. I will be on there. Uh, we'll all be on there to help you out. Uh, and we also do cyan build sessions about twice a month now. Uh, so that anybody who has a question or who is interested in building their cyan will definitely be able to um, provide you with the resources you need to get started. Cool. Well, thanks so much for the personalized walkthrough. I mean, the instructions online are quite good and detailed. And I think I probably could have done this without your guiding hand, but uh, I think it was more fun this way. And thanks I think for it was it. as well. Thank you so much, Ross. <laughs> Appreciate it. And this is so cool. I'm glad to help and to see that you're underway on your own personal journey with Cyan. So yeah, well, links to all those things are in the show notes. If you'd like to do this as well, get involved. I think it's really cool what Open Air Collective is doing. And Dahl, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you so much, Ross. It's been a pleasure. For me too. And if it's been a pleasure for you listening, please rate and review us on, I guess if you're watching this on YouTube, thumbs up, subscribe. If you're listening, rating and reviewing on Apple Podcasts or iTunes is always appreciated. It helps us get this content out to more people. And thank you so much for listening. And then I guess I'll cut here, I guess. I've never yeah, had a yeah. video. I'll, I'll cut here as well uh, with my audio recording. Well, thank you so much for listening. If you like the show, please rate and review it in Apple Podcasts and or Stitcher. It really helps us a lot to get this content to a wider audience. If you think what we're doing is useful, interesting, fun, hopefully all three, we'd certainly appreciate your rating and review. You can keep up with Nori at nori.com, where there is a newsletter, that's nori.com slash subscribe. 
there's podcast, there's a whole bunch else, or you can send us an email at podcast at nori.com. We are also now on Patreon at patreon.com slash nori podcasts if you'd like more content, engagement, and community. And thank you so much for your support.